business tips to successfully start and run your business so your business doesn't run you. And more importantly, we provide personal development tools to create a better version of yourself to provide the solid foundation for your life and business to stand upon. This is The Biz Reveal, and I'm your host, Craig Sawyer. This week's episode is sponsored by Sawyer Health Solutions. Protecting what's important to you is what's important to us. Get your free health insurance quote at SawyerHealthSolutions.com. Serial entrepreneur and experienced keynote speaker, Mike Savage believes entrepreneurship should be a passionate philosophical journey with equal parts heart, mind, and skill, not a life of frustration and isolation. Mike offers his audiences a brightly lit path to the destination of the heart's desire. After the show, learn more at www.thesavagesecrets.com. This is the Biz Reveal Podcast with this week's guest, Mike Savage. Yeah, hey, Craig, Mike Savage. I'm a uh, serial entrepreneur. I'm a investor. I'm a, you know, uh, business coach. I like to call myself a badass business coach. Actually, I didn't come up with that name. One of my, one of my uh, clients did, but it's actually even better um, when you're not the one that came up with it, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and so you know, I am. I'm. Uh, I guess. I've done a lot of stuff over the last thirty years. I have built uh, many businesses. My largest company grew to 25 million. I had 50 employees, sold about a quarter of a billion dollars worth of product to the world's leading retailers, the Targets, the Walmarts, the Kohl's, Sam's, Costco. And, you know, it it was an incredible journey. Each business that I've had has started with an idea. And, you know, some have some have turned into big businesses and some have turned into massive, I call it experiences. Um <laughs> Where you tend to, uh, there's there's only two ways to learn something, yours or someone else's. And when it's your experience, it hurts more, costs more, and takes a lot longer. So, you, you tend to remember that one a lot longer as well, though. So I've had a few of those ultra painful experiences. And then, you know, a few years ago, uh, I had this reflection and I'm like, what am I doing? I wasn't happy. Um in, in my professional life. And I said, what do I love? And one of the things that I've always loved is teaching. You know, even during graduate school, I was a teacher's assistant. I used to be the dude that gets up there and, you know, in the, you know, if my professor was away, I'd, I'd be on stage and, you know, giving lectures to my peers, sometimes older than me. And I've always had that, that love and that passion for teaching. And so I said, how do I take those two things, one of them being entrepreneurship and the other one being teaching and put them together and eventually ended up with a, a business where I now, uh, you know, I educate, entertain, motivate and inspire entrepreneurs to go on that journey. And I and I say that it's, uh, you know, someone says, what do you do? You know, I help entrepreneurs win the emotional and financial roller coaster sport of business. It, and uh, I like that it's both aspects of it because they're always intertwined, right? I mean, it's it's it is a roller coaster. You have super high highs and super low lows. Um, and I like that you're talking about that. Well, I don't like talking, hearing that you weren't happy, but you know that <laughs> you, you did have some self reflection, and and I've gone through that multiple times, uh, as, especially as of late. And I am the same exact way. First of all, my wife is a teacher, uh, but in my roles and managerial uh, roles and uh, just as an insurance agent, I'm training other agents. The part about my job I like the most is training other people. I, I really do like training other people and, and building them to be as good or better than than I've made myself. And so I would like to do that myself. But the problem I've always had is I feel like I'm not really an expert, like an expert at any one thing enough to be able to teach somebody else. And I think it's just a matter of being able to find whatever it is that I enjoy doing and I have knowledge about and just sharing that knowledge with other people in an entertaining manner. Right. Dude. Um, you know, as I, as I've gone on this journey, um, one of the things that I've uncovered is that so much of our, uh, entrepreneurial 
uh, trip has to do with the six inches that are stuffed between your ears. Yeah. And, you know, and, and that's why, you know, I have this philosophical approach to entrepreneurship. And I say that as entrepreneurs, we live and, and live and play three movies simultaneously in our journey. And I call that heart set, mindset, and skill set. And what I mean by this is we as entrepreneurs, and I'm going to get to your point about um, not feeling 100% confident that I get all the specifics, but the, the journey that we go on as entrepreneurs is, is interesting and it, it's packed with, you know, equal parts optimism and excitement and equal parts of fear and apprehension because you just don't know what you don't know, especially when you're starting your first business. And so when I look at the entrepreneur, I say, we are human beings first and then businessmen and businesswomen second, like, like that's some kind of fancy thing. But an experience that you have, a bad experience or a good experience that you, you have with your spouse or significant other or your children or your parents can have more to do, will impact your day more than any business situation at all. And so when I, when I talk about the Entrepreneur's Trilogy, the first movie in the trilogy is what I call Heart Set. And that, the Heart Set movie is built on three pillars. The first is health. Health is that one thing that we all take for granted, not all, I shouldn't say all, many, many people take for granted until it's taken away from us. And so to me, and, and I've been in the health and fitness industry with many of my companies over the last 30 years, um, I've just always been part, this has always been part of me and part of my wife's journey. And so my wife's a certified health coach, but you know, your health and then your relationships, you know, your friends, your family, your spouse, your children, and then your happiness that to me is what I call the heart set movie. And so if you're healthy, relatively healthy, very healthy, you have great relationships with your friends, your family, your spouses, your spouse, your children, and you're happy, I think you've won the game. Okay, now let's face it. If you have those three things in your life and happiness is that one thing, it's when your life conditions match your vision of what you wanted your life to be. That's happiness. Right. Now, for some people, you can be unhappy and be multi, multi-millionaires okay? because your your perception or your goal or what, what your definition of happiness is, was to be a billionaire. And then there's some people that are happy and they, they, they don't have those aspirations financially. They're like, look, I have a great relationship with my spouse and my kids. You know, I have a nice business that's keeping me going. I've won. The challenge we get is the next piece, which is what I call mindset. And the mindset movie begins and ends with the stuff that's jammed between our ears. Now, you were, you were implying about, look, I want to teach. And, and so I want to um, you know, be able to educate my clients, my consumers, whoever might be out there in certain areas. Lots of times, our self-talk and our language and our belief system about certain things hold us back from taking steps and taking initiative and trying different stuff. The, the definition of entrepreneur, or like I like to use it, is kind of like the intersection of someone that takes risk and someone that doesn't like rules and someone that's willing to just try stuff and doesn't care what other people think. And so it's, it's an interesting uh, psychology, this entrepreneur, but the mindset, like movie number two mindset, the stuff that you put into your head on a day in and day out basis has more impact on your decision making than anything else. Now, for example, I have this belief system about our, the first 18 years of our lives. First 18 years of our lives, we have zero control. Let's face it, right. we cannot control our parents. We can't control, were we brought up in an environment with money? 
Were you brought up in an environment with, with drugs? Was there abuse? Was there alcohol? Did our parents teach us, you know, work hard to get ahead? Or did they teach you, hey, let's slack off and try and collect welfare or try and cheat the system or try and get by somehow? So that stuff has influenced us. And all of a sudden, we become adults. <laughs> we turn 19 years old and we go off and do this thing. We're supposed to be adults. Every decision that we make, every time we reach that fork in the road, we're going to make take a left or a right based on what's in our head. All of the experiences that we've had up to this point are going to influence a left or a right. And so you come to a fork in the road, you take a left or a right. And I just read a study by Inc. Magazine that said we make 38,000 decisions a day. Now, I don't know who the hell counted them all. <laughs> Is that a decision to talk, a decision to move I, my arm? <laughs> it, it was just, but but I, when I started to think through it, it's like, so we're making a decision. You know, you made a decision today. Do I do my podcast? I made a decision today. Do I serve my clients? I made a decision today. Do I work out? And so all of those different decisions, uh, as we go through the life's journey, you make a left or a right. Next, get to the next fork, make a left or a right. And ultimately, you end up somewhere. And that somewhere is you can be a real estate mogul. You can be a professional baseball player. You can be a priest. You can be a teacher. Um, you could be homeless. All of those destinations are predicated based on all these little tiny decisions that we make throughout this journey. And so the stuff that's in our brain, the stuff that's in our mind and the stuff that we continue to feed it is going to influence that next decision at that next fork in the road. Now, I was running companies for a lot of years. I still run companies, still have three businesses. But did I think that I could be a coach or a teacher to entrepreneur? I didn't know, but I tried. I'm like, I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to see if people are engaged. I'm going to see, more importantly, do I help people? Right. And I literally was at breakfast last weekend, and it's a woman that owns a restaurant, and she had gone through restaurants, and this, you know, as you know, uh, not one of the most ideal businesses to be in in the world of COVID, um, but my wife and I went there and had breakfast with her and uh, had breakfast in a restaurant. And then after the breakfast, she came over and literally broke down and cried and hugged me and said, you have no idea you've changed my life. And that's one of those things that you kind of get a sense. I'm in the right spot. I'm saying the right stuff. I'm I'm doing something I'm incredibly passionate doing about. Doing the right thing. And it's amazing. You, you take this, this thing on our shoulders. And, and so the challenge would be, Greg, as you're saying, well, do I have enough knowledge? Like, you just try stuff. You just get up and try because you'd be amazed how much your experience, how much greater it is than someone who doesn't have much experience. Like if I'm talking to someone who's starting their own business, I also volunteer for an organization called SCORE. It's called Service Corps of Retired Executives, where basically they help, you know, entrepreneurs that is like, hey, I think I want to try this journey. Um, and I still do that. And I get such a high helping some of these clients that I know are at the spot where I used to be. And just my, you know, scars, my battle wounds, my pain, my suffering, my tears, my lost millions help someone else. And so it, it's a it's a really cool feeling. So if you do have these thoughts of, hey, maybe I can like give it a shot. You know, Try. I was just uh, recording another session uh, just a few hours ago. And one of the things that came up, something you just said kind of reminded me of because, you know, is it, that mindset of, you know, sometimes I just feel like maybe I have a little imposter syndrome, like, you know, like I'm trying to be something I'm not, um, but I want to share my experiences. And all those, some of those experiences, in fact, a large majority of them, as you and I were talking about before we started recording, were failures. You know, there's complete flops. Why would I want to share that with somebody? And we were joking around that, man, maybe we should just make a podcast about 
yeah, here's all the stuff that you shouldn't do, right? <laughs> Instead of, you know, the tips and tricks of how to make things work out for you, here's the stuff to stay away from. Take it from me. I've done it. I've screwed everything up. I've lost a lot of money. I've lost a lot of time. You're not going to get yeah. it back. And it could actually be fairly entertaining, um, but you're sharing negative experiences too. You're not trying to be something that you're not. You're just taking what you actually are and putting it forth in front of other people that can learn from you. And, and it, it hasn't been easy for me to share my experiences because a few years ago, um, I was in a really dark place. You know, I went through a period, a four week period. Well, I can back up a little bit. And, you know, there was a period of time where the business I had for like a three year period wasn't doing great. My mom had lung cancer and that went on for about three years and, you know, constantly going to chemo with her. And, you know, it just was, it was, it was a tough period. And then my mom died. And I remember saying to my wife, cause my business was still struggling. I remember saying to my wife, my like, hun, we've got a guardian angel now. She's going to help us salvage this business and resurrect this business. And the business I had was 16 years old or 15 years old. And at the time, my, my kids were 14 and 16. So I raised this other thing, this business from scratch. And so it was part of us. It was very, very emotional. And uh, so when it's not doing good, it weighs on you. And that's part of the challenge of being an entrepreneur. It Sometimes it becomes your soul. And it was to me, it was to us. And then um, after my mom died, I said, we got a guardian angel. Seven days after we buried her, I got a letter from my bank that said, Mike, you need to put in a million dollars or we're shutting you down. And so that wasn't a good day. And then seven days later, no, actually the same day, my wife goes into the hospital with pneumonia. She was in intensive care for seven days. And then a week and a half after that, I got a letter from the IRS saying I was being audited. So needless to say, this wasn't one of Mike's. Uh, it wasn't a high point. <laughs> sell, high, high, wasn't, wasn't a high point in my life. Yeah. But what happened during this transition or during this journey was when I said, mom, my guardian angel, I know you're going to help me through this. What I was thinking and what ha- that transpired were two totally different things. And I look back now and I say, where I'm at in my life, personally, professionally, with the companies I have, I've never, maybe early on, but I, have, I don't remember the last time I've been this happy. And I had to go through that challenging period in order to, and, and fought through it and got through it to the point where now I have this new business I flat out love what I'm doing. You know, I have big dreams and big goals as to where I want to take this uh, coaching and consulting and, uh, you know, education business. And it wouldn't have happened had the other business been saved. Well, without the light, you don't or without the darkness, you don't really you can't really appreciate the light. And I know that sounds so cliche. And, you know, a lot of things that I say are cliche, but it's because I find truth in it. And, you know, you don't know good unless you know bad, you know, like, and you see this a lot with like, you know, maybe affluent kids that grow up and they, you know, they get everything that they want growing up, you know, you're the son or daughter of a millionaire or billionaire, you know, what, what could you possibly need or want that you, that you don't already have? So you don't necessarily appreciate those things one, you know, like somebody else would, um, you know, just like normal everyday folks like you and I, right. You know, we get in a car every day, we go to work, you know, my stop off at McDonald's or mm-hmm. you know, Starbucks and get a cup of coffee. And, and it's, I mean, that's just a, an everyday kind of thing. But if you're somebody who is homeless, you know, they, they dream of having a life like that. So sometimes it is good to, uh, to step back and be humble and realize because I get caught up in that, you know, and what you're just talking about kind of made me realize that um, again, kind of bring, brings it forward is you get caught up in, what you consider to be success. Right. And, and especially for, I think it's worse for guys. I don't know, because with guys, you know, whenever you, you and your wife go somewhere and you're meeting somebody for the first time, it's probably the second question you get asked as a guy is, so what do you do for a living? Right. It's all about your, your status. 
Mm-hmm. And so you really get caught up and, you, and your businesses are your baby and everything. Um, but if it's not, even though you're successful, money's coming in, you always have, you always want it to be more, right? You're happy. You're happy. You're content. You, you know, things are good. I, I appreciate it. But if I can do that, I can do more, you know, so you're always pulling, you're always trying to find that next rung of the ladder. What else can I do? What else can I do? And it sometimes may look or appear like you're not happy with your life. And how can you not appreciate what you have? Oh, no, trust me. I appreciate everything I've got. I came from nothing. Um, so every everything that I have now is a blessing to me. But I want more. I'm not done yet. You know what I mean? Well, so you know sometimes the, it's a the, tough balance. Yeah. The interesting thing, Craig, is, you know, as I as I've gone on this uh, this latest journey, one of the things and, and it, it's ironic that we're in movie number two mindset and we're mm-hmm. talking about this. But one of the things that I have implemented in my life and it didn't start there, but I have and, and if if ever if anyone's ever seen one of my uh, speeches or my presentation or my webinars, I always talk about this because I think it it's a, it's a game changer. It was for me. And that is my morning routine. And lots of, uh, you know, most of us wake up and the very first thing we do is we grab this thing mm-hmm. and it automatically starts sending stuff through our brain, through our body, chemical reactions versus what I've done now or what I've implemented is I, I call it Savage Seven. There's seven steps that I take every morning without fail that you know, I ain't perfect. I'm not going to be the first to sit here and like, oh, man, everything's perfect. Mike never loses his – he loses it <laughs> sure, sometimes. Absolutely. You're human. Um, but I, I wake up, first thing I do is I jump in a nice cold shower for 60 seconds. Now, there are health benefits to that. So I, I live up in New England. And we literally just opened our pool today. It is March 31st. And the water is 33 degrees, maybe. <laughs> and so what did I do this morning? I jumped in the pool. Oh, yeah, that's now, nuts. <laughs> that's a little whacked. But the reason I do it, and there are actually um, medical benefits to this, what it does to the capillaries and what it does to the blood flow and stuff like that. I don't do it for that. I do it because it requires zero skill to do that, whether it get, you know, and, and, and I have a good sized house and I'm on the third floor and in the middle of winter and, and the hot water heater is down on the first floor right. in the basement. It takes a long time <laughs> right. for the warm water to get upstairs. <laughs> and so it doesn't require any skill, physical skill. It only requires mental skill, mental toughness. And the, what, the reason I do it is I get to say I won the first decision of the day. Now, many people think I'm whacked and I'm, Totally cool with that, but I do it for that reason. And then I, I live on a reservoir. I go down to the reservoir and I meditate. I practice gratitude. I visualize my perfect day. I have these incantations or these morning things that part of my language for my day. Uh, and, and it's just things that I say to myself. To, it's kind of like, you know, use a sports analogy. When the football team at the beginning of the game, is coming out of the locker room. They don't nonchalantly gallivant out of the locker room onto the field and say, hey, let's go play football. They are screaming. They are fired up. They are high-fiving. They create this level of energy. And so that to me is how I start my day. And then obviously you put put together your game plan for the day and, and you just attack. So it's like, I want to give myself the best chance to win the game, but it all ultimately does come down to the stuff that we believe, the stuff that goes into our brains has more to do with the ultimate outcome of that day than anything else. If you go into, you know, I, I am a hardcore baseball fan. I am from Boston, Massachusetts. I am a Boston Red Sox addict. And one of the stories that I use in many of my speeches has to do with the 2004 Red Sox. And I don't know if you're a baseball fan or if you know anything about baseball, but in 2004, the Red Sox hadn't won the World Series in 86 years. And they go into the playoffs against their dreaded arch enemies, the New York Yankees. And 
It's the American League Championship Series. In the American League Championship, seven games, first team to win four. The Yankees come out, they win the first three games. And, and they didn't win them by a little. They crushed the Red Sox, three games in a row. The New York papers are writing the articles, dead Sox, or, you know, you know the sweep. You know, we're sweeping, that, sweeping the Red Sox away. And right before game four, they're on the field at Fenway Park and they're interviewing one of still one of my favorite celebrity slash players, Kevin Millar. And a Boston sportscaster is going, dude, no one's ever come back from a 3-0 deficit ever in the playoffs. And Kevin Millar could have sat there and said, yeah, hey, you know what? He goes, let me tell you something. He goes, don't let us win this game. Don't let us win this game. I'm telling you right now, don't let us win this game. Because if we win this game, we have Pedro coming, Pedro Martinez. He was going to pitch game five. Kurt Schilling was going to pitch game six. And he said, anything can happen in a game seven. So he was one of the leaders of the team, wasn't the best player, but he was a spark. He was a personality. And I'm not going to say he willed the Red Sox. But his attitude and his approach to something that was so, for, for all intents and purposes, insurmountable, it's never been done. Yeah. Moral of the story, Red Sox come back. They win four games straight. They beat the Yankees in the American League Championship Series. They go to the World Series and they win that. First time they won the World Series in 86 years. When you're self-employed, whether as an independent contractor or a business owner, when it comes to health insurance, you're on your own. Health insurance for the self-employed individual is imperative. When you get sick or injured, you aren't working and you don't get sick days. You may end up facing staggering medical expenses and loss of income. Health risks and uncertainties are a part of life. You can't always plan when you get sick, but you can be prepared for the financial aspect. The best way to be prepared against uncertain health risks is with the right health insurance plan. Call Sawyer Health Solutions today for your free consultation and quote. Allow us to put a plan together that makes sense for your situation. Call 239-677-9877 or go to our website at SawyerHealthSolutions.com. Protecting what's important to you is what's important to us. So what's my point here? My point is when faced with adversity, you have many approaches, it's kind of like Mike Tyson. Everybody's got a game plan until they get punched in the mouth. Okay. Now, in business, it's the same thing. You have a game plan. It's like you call it a business plan. You call it a strategic plan. You call it a marketing plan. In March of 2020, it didn't matter what your business plan was for many industries. It went up in smoke. It didn't matter. Some went away. Some, like I, I know people in many different industries where they looked at the challenge and said, I'm done. Then I find others that look at the same challenge in the same exact industry and took a totally different approach, an aggressive approach. I'm going to go get this. I'm going to try and reinvent myself. So it's not the challenge. It's your response to the challenge. And so I know we're talking a lot about mindset here, but to me, it's a game changer for the entrepreneur. And sort of to finish the, the trilogy, so the, the, the movie number two is called Mindset. And it's what goes into your brain and how that moves around in there. And then the next piece is momentum. So it's mind and momentum. What's momentum? What is that thing that will pull you into taking action. So you can't push a rope. You know, and I just, I just wrote a book and I'll, and I'll tell you listeners about it when I get to the end. Um, but it's called dream big and crush your goals. And one of the things in the book I talk about is you can't push a rope. What does that mean? That means you need something, a goal or something to pull you into the future that has, has enough energy and fire to get you to take action so that you can eventually make whatever you're dreaming about come true. So movie number two, mind, momentum, and movement. So you have to take action. You can't, like there's lots of books that talk about the universe and positive mental attitude and, you know, sitting on the couch and visualizing these great things coming into your life. I think it's a bunch of garbage. Yeah, if you now, don't get up and actually do something and act on it, it's still just a thought in your head, right? It, it's It's... Action matters. 
And so even trying something and failing or trying and having it not work out exactly great, I always tell my clients, progress, not perfection. Just go try stuff. That's what entrepreneurs do. Now, everyone hopes that if they come out with a new product or they come out with a new business service or they come out with, it's going to work. Everybody hopes that you aspire to that. You don't go out like, hey, I hope I fail. Um, but without taking action, without moving in a direction, all the positive attitude and, and self-esteem and good stuff going into your brain is useless. You have to take action. So, you know, circling back, movie number one, heart set. Movie number two, mindset. And then movie number three, the third movie in the trilogy is what I call skill set. And skill set is kind of the fundamentals of business. And I try and break it down. This is sort of my, my teaching coming in. I try to make it as simple as possible. But every single business on earth does one thing. It solves a problem. Every business, no matter what it is, you have a problem and then there's a solution. So your solution may be something completely radical. It may be something uh, incremental, but it's solving a problem. And so when you have that, I, I say the, the, the skill set, three pieces of skill set is your product or service, your target market, and your strategic marketing plan. Now, business becomes much more complicated than that. You have a product or a service. What do you need to do? Well, you need to, is it, a, is it a physical product? What about quality control? What about sourcing? What about inventory? What about, you know, distribution? Is it, um, what's the competitive landscape like? What's the pricing like? What's, what is, what is all the, what, what is the, where is the world going? So you've got your product or service, then you look at your target market. And I, and I always put it in this order because your target market needs to be, is ultimately who purchases your product and they are the source of your marketing. And so the target market can't just be, and, and part of one of my webinars, I talk about Clueless Business Inc. And Clueless Business Inc. is I make a bunch of stuff. If you have a heartbeat, you're a customer of mine. And then I want to do Facebook, LinkedIn advertising. Like, what? I talk to so many people like, yeah, I got to ramp up my, I got to ramp up my, my Facebook and YouTube or LinkedIn advertising. Like, what's your product portfolio? Well, who, who is your ideal client? Who's your, right. they miss this whole thing. Just kind and of so, sewing aimlessly at a dartboard that might be ex somewhere exactly. out there, but they don't know where. It, exactly. And so, you know, movie number three is called skill set. And those three pieces, heart set, mindset, and skill set is what I call the entrepreneur's trilogy. And we have to be constantly reevaluating each one of these things in our lives constantly. So what do, what do business people do? Well, they have a business plan. They have an annual plan. They, they have a forecast. Well, you go off and you put your team together and you charge out into the bat field of battle and you try and win the game. Well, sometimes, think, not sometimes, never do they work out? <laughs> right. not, not exactly. You know, it could be a little high, a little low. Very rarely is like, well, I really hope to, you know, bring in, you know, $104 million this year and, and $6.7 million in profit. Like, <laughs> it never works out. There's always challenges. There's personnel challenges. So business can become much, can, can become extremely complex, but the heartbeat of business, your product service portfolio, your your target market or ideal client and your strategic marketing plan never changes for anybody. That is that is the foundation of business. It gets more complicated. You know, all of a sudden you have finance departments and operation departments and human resources and hiring and logistics and warehousing. Like you can have all of that stuff, but at its core, fundamental is how do I differentiate my product or service from the marketplace, how do I become a, a, my competitive landscape is a group of none, meaning I'm so unique and different that I share, you know, when I go out into the marketplace, I will be recognized for, for my difference. Commodities, commoditization is simple. I have another company that sells products, e-commerce, and they're in the fitness, fitness product world, fitness and exercise. And I have factories in Asia and I, bring the goods in and they're very unique and strategic marketing and all the rest of this stuff. So many people have 
copied our products. So many, it, do, it doesn't matter. If you go look for a product right now, it doesn't matter what it is. The camera that I'm using for, for this podcast, there's, you, you search for cameras for a podcast or cameras for Zoom, there's thousands of options. How do you differentiate? How do you make, you know, you're in, you're in the insurance business as well as the podcast development business. What makes your podcast unique? It's and that's, that is the hard part, though, when you're right. when you're creating a business. Why should somebody pick my product over the other six products that are you know similar? It's, you know, hey, a camera is a camera, right? What makes my camera the choice? What sets me apart? Well, that that it it, it ultimately does does come down to what is your vision for your business, okay? And marketing is difficult, you know. It's like you could have the greatest widget on earth or the greatest service. If you can't tell the world about it, it's pretty difficult. The real home runs in business, the greatest home runs, at least from a consumer products perspective, are those that have something unique. They really understand their target market and they are advertising and they are marketing and they are looking at all these different options to create awareness for their brand. There's many ways to create awareness. You can take a product and you can give it to a celebrity and you can pay that celebrity a lot of money. And I've done this with my other companies. Um, a million dollars to represent a product for a year, you know, but some people do it. That's a way of getting your name out. Podcast, YouTube, Facebook lives, video, you know, you name it. People are doing also. What am I doing right now? I'm, I am partnering with Craig on his podcast because I want to get my message out to the world to say, look, the journey of entrepreneurship. And I love this one. This is my, I I actually, I've been told I should take and trademark this, but um, when your bathroom mirror becomes your board of advisors, it's time to invite someone new to the meeting. Entrepreneurship can be unbelievably lonely. And when you have people that you can surround yourself with. I always say, play the game with people that do things differently or better than you do. Because when you hang around with the same people, with the same mindset and the same stories and the same set of excuses, you are going to get what your peers get. You are what you're around. 100%. And so this journey of entrepreneurship is something that I am so passionate about. I'm so excited when, when I have a client cry in my arms, like, wow, you know, that's cool. And I, and, and it, the, the journey of entrepreneurship, when you have that seasoned sounding board can make the trip so much more pleasurable. And so I believe that, you know, the more that, and there's multiple different organizations out there that do all sorts of different things to bring entrepreneurs together, but having a team of people that you can surround yourself with when you're going on this journey of building a company is so important because talking to yourself in the mirror, actually, it's not bad. If you talk to yourself in the mirror and then you're like, is it a, huh? And you're not really sure what you're saying. That's time when you, you you might need to check out some medication or something like that. But <laughs> but having others that are going on the same or similar journey as you are and having the ability to sort of bounce ideas off them, that's the value that a business coach brings. That's a value of any coach. Now, I don't just say it because I, you know, it's, it's my business. I have coach. I have two. I have two business coaches. And I rely on them. One of them is more a mindset coach, but I rely on them so much to challenge me on my thinking, my belief systems, my strategic plan, um, helping me go on the journey with someone who's been there, done that. And, and it's just, it, you know, I, I'm just, uh, I'm super excited about the anyone that wants to go on this journey called. Well, and with- going to start a business. Yeah. And with the coaching too, it gives you a fresh perspective. You know, like you said, if you're looking in the mirror and you're the, you know, that's, that's your board of directors, that's it. You know, you, you just have that one point of view and you could be the most intelligent person in your field or you could not be, it doesn't matter. Regardless, it's a very closed 
thought process. And when you bring other people into the mix, you're getting different opinions, um, you know, from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different genders, different. I mean, they we all have a different story that we have gone through in our lives. So we're going to view everything that happens. You know, you can right. see the same, you know, this the same thing happen and you're going to have three different stories from three different people that viewed yep. the same thing. So I like that idea of making sure because you got to surround yourself with 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 other people. And I always told my son when he was growing up, if you know, if you're the the best person in your group, you're in the wrong group. You know, you yeah. need to surround yourself with people that you aspire to be, not, you know, just be the only person in the group that other people are aspiring to be. You know, what I mean, you need to look up to somebody and always have, you know, somebody to look up to it and try to try to be better. Um, another thing you talked about, because I want to make sure we talk about this before uh, before we end up you know, getting out of time here. You have something that, uh, that's the three secrets of legendary entrepreneurs. Can you talk about that for a minute? So, you know, it, 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 it's kind of boils. It, it, it's, it's similar to the stuff that we we're talking about. So the first thing I believe is that we really need, and that, that's why my book, and, and, and uh, uh, it's, it's called Dream Big and Crush Your Goals. And if anyone's interested, thesavagesecrets.com slash playbook. Uh, but it's having, having that ability to visualize something and I'm big on vision boarding, you know, and one of my most recent webinar was about vision boarding. And, and, and I had people say, oh, I'm not going to stick a picture of a Lamborghini and a yacht on a piece of cardboard. I'm like, no, you're missing the point. I, I believe that, you know, you, you probably have seen the um, many times when people go on goal setting, they say, well, here's the different pieces of the pie or the wedges of the pizza. I don't believe that. I believe that those key areas in our lives are interconnected. And I call it the savage circle. And so my point is, is like, it's family, it's health, it's business, it's, it's uh, personal development, it's, uh, you know, fun and contribution, it's finances. So all of these things are connected. And part of the, what, what I would consider legendary entrepreneurs is they visualize, they set goals, and they don't just, you know, say, hey, this is my, they write it down, it's specific, you know, and, and I say it, this smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, time based. Everyone's heard that, but it ain't enough. You need to take that specific goal and then have a game plan associated with it. And then ultimately, you should share that with someone. So one of the secrets is, is real simply, it's that. Visualize, create goals. And again, one of my webinars, uh, you know, has all of this stuff in it. Uh, and, and the second piece is really... Like we were talking about earlier, Craig, in, you know, when people, they're running a business and they immediately run out there and then they go and, hey, I got a business. So I'm just going to start spending money on Facebook and Google ads and like, please slow down. And, and one of the secrets is don't spend another penny on digital marketing or social media or advertising until you fully understand your product portfolio and your target demographic. You know, I have multiple uh, pieces of my business. One is one-on-one -on -one coaching. Then I have masterminds. I have speaking engagements. So my ideal client for my coaching business, someone that's running a business anywhere from 100000 to $3 million, they started it from scratch. They're responsible for financials. They're driven to grow the business. Um, and they're an A player. And, and so that's kind of my target market for that. But if I'm looking for stages to speak on, whether it be a podcast or a stage or a live event, my target market is completely different. So the entrepreneurs need to really get a handle on what is your product service portfolio and who is your ideal client or target market before you do any of the other stuff. And then the third piece for legendary entrepreneurs, and, and the thing is we talked about it earlier, is, is to me, I call it Savage Sunrise. And I got savage in a whole bunch of stuff, but it is. Uh, hey, if you got a cool last name, man. It happens use to it. be my name, so I get to use it. <laughs> That's right. Um, it's it's the morning routine. It is. Please, for for the love of God, do not pick this thing up first thing in the morning. You know, don't pick it up. Don't look at it. Don't check emails. Don't check social media. Build the foundation to your day, whatever that might be. And it's taken me a while to get locked in where I'm at now, but. Just start, do some research, figure some stuff out because 
This thing that's on top of our shoulders is so powerful and so important that for us to spend 20 minutes at the beginning of the day conditioning our, our brain and conditioning our belief system and conditioning our, our heart and our mind and our soul to start the day, you got a much better chance of winning that day than when you jump right into emails and Facebook and Yeah, and I've realized and- that too. Uh, two, two different times that I'm probably like most folks notorious for getting on the phone and checking Facebook is when I first wake up and right before I go to bed. And I'm, I have a, a mind that goes crazy when I lay down to go to sleep, right? I'm just I'm trying to unwind. I got everything going through my head. Sometimes it's a good thing. I can work out the problems for the next day. I'm, I'm trying to sort through it. It's nice and peaceful. I can do that. But sometimes you want to turn it off and you can't. And when you're scrolling through, especially last year, you know, with the, the presidential election going on and you got everybody hating each other on, you know, on Facebook and being overly political and, you know, this group hating that group and so on. It, it really puts you in a mood. So if you're doing that first thing in the morning, like you said, the first thing you see is negative, 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 negative. What's that mean for the rest of your day? It and, and does most put people, you in a bad mood. Most people start their day that way. They put on the news. Yeah. What is the news? The news is nothing, but it begins with an end for a reason. It's a negative because negative stuff sells. It's very rare that you're going to find the story of, you know, the, the eight-year-old kid that helped walk the old lady across the street to go to the store and, you know, help her buy her groceries and came on like, that's rare. That's uncommon. Like it's always car accidents, political, bad backstabbing, um, you know, negative stuff going on in the world. It's like, that's how most people's day start. And, and I'll tell you, there is a, there's a, there's a the bad side to that. Like, I don't really know what the heck goes on in the world sometimes. Like I don't, because I don't read the news. You know, every now and then I'm going to turn the news on and see what's going on um, or, or read about it. But I don't pay a lot of attention to that stuff because it's, you know, for all. All right. Coronavirus. I heard about, you know, <laughs> I, I heard that this thing happened. Um, and so, so that but, did make it to you then. You, yeah, it, it, you didn't it, catch it, that rose to the, it rose to the top. <laughs> but, but 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 most of the time when we're turning on the news, it's not good. It's right. not positive. But this is how people start their day. And then you wonder why they're miserable and you wonder why they're in dead end jobs. And you wonder why they're not fired up and optimistic and energetic. You know, when I was raising my kids, it was never, how was your day? Never. They would come home starting from the day they could talk and walk. Why was your day great? That was it. Why was your day? You have to find something, Mm -hmm. you know, they come home, they're all bloody. They got in a fight. Why was your day great? Well, I didn't rip my pants. Like, so find something. I, you know, I love that you said that because I, I want to make that point too. I, th- and I'm sure you've heard of this too, where, you know, they say, if, you know, you look at a picture, all right. And then, you know, do you see anything yellow and you, you see yellow and then they'll take the picture away, you wait like two minutes and it's like, name something that was red in that picture. And you can't name it because you were focused on the yellow, right? You didn't pay the red was right there in front of your face. There was a fire hydrant right there. Right. But you didn't see it because you're so focused on the yellow. And that's kind of how those negative things do. So if you're asking specifically what good happened today, now you're focused on the good and not focused on the bad or the negative. I, I was I was super pumped. And, and I and I had a whole bunch of these, you know, dad isms when my <laughs> kids, my kids are in college now. Um, but I, I had these all, a lot of these dad isms, things that I would say, like, why would you date great there? I know all that one and blah, blah, blah. But I was super pumped the other day. It was probably three weeks ago. My son, um, he's a freshman in college and he got a necklace and it had, it's a four sided necklace and, you know, uh, or, or it's got a, a pendant that has four sides to it. One of them is one of his buddies who was 16, 18, just died of leukemia. Um, one's his girlfriend. One's his, this other thing. And one, one's baseball. He's a baseball player. And the fourth side, it said, always works out. And this was one of the things that I told my kids from the very beginning. And I, and, and I wish that I could say I believe lived this my whole life. I had some, some moments. I, I guess I fell off the wagon. But the same for our kids when we were growing up was it always works out for the Savage family. It always works out. In the best, <laughs> the best story that I have about this is 
we're on a vacation somewhere. I, I actually think we're, we went, we're going to Hawaii and we had to get back. And so you can't, we didn't fly direct to Hawaii, flew to LA. And then there was something like snowstorms or floods in Massachusetts, New England. It was all, all messed up. Couldn't get here. And so we had to fly into uh, Pittsburgh. And Pittsburgh is like a 10 hour drive. Oh. And, and the kid's like, oh, and I, like, no, I always work south of Sash Family. I was, and like, I'm saying to my wife, I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> like, 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 we had to fly into Pittsburgh and we had to stay overnight there. And then we rented a car. And then we rented a car. We we're going to drive back nine hours. And we ended up getting diverted into upstate New York because all the roads were washed out. They were flooded out. And so we ended up spending another night in upstate New York. And I'm like, always works out for the Savage family. Look, we never, we would never seen Albany, you know, <laughs> whatever stuff. And then it happened three nights. We spent three nights. It was like Pittsburgh and then, you know. Extended uh, vacation. Yeah. But it was <laughs> the, the entirety of it was I had conditioned the kids to think it always works out. This is perfect. Like it couldn't have been more unperfect. It couldn't have worked out worse, but I tried to program them. All right. And, you know, so to this day, you know, I, I only had three goals for my kids growing up, happy, healthy, and self-confident. I didn't care about anything else. And, uh, you know, a lot of, I think these little, uh, little things, you know, make a difference. You know, people would, you know, uh, e even now when someone asks me how I'm doing, great, I'm doing great. I don't, I don't care if I just, you know, severed my arm. I just say it. It just comes out naturally. People, when I, cause when I got out of college, I actually went for, um, I, I had a, a job and people would be like, how you doing? I'm great. And like, I'm walking down the hall. Great. They thought it was whacked. Like, like you, you would almost scare people because they were expecting, how you doing? Well, doing okay. You know, it's Monday, you know, or well, yeah, good. You've seen the weather. Like this was a great one. I went mountain biking two weeks ago. First, first sunny day, you know, still a little bit of ice on the trails. <laughs> And I'm going down a trail and it was like a 65 degree day. And like I'm hitting the trails, going down this trail and this woman's walking her dog. And I couldn't have been higher. This mountain biking is my thing. It's my release. Going down the trail, I pass this woman with her dog and the sun's shining. It's like 430 in the afternoon. And I go, this is unbelievable. How do we not take advantage of this? And she goes, yeah, but it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> you, you know, but, but that's, and it's so easy to do that. And that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother show itself is yeah. doing that. And I am notorious for doing, it. I've been working on that a lot the last like two years or so is that it is so much easier. In fact, I have a, a, a podcast show from last year uh, where I, I spoke to it. She was a life coach and I was talking about that. I'm like, why is it so easy for me to see the negative stuff when I've got so much positive stuff around me? Is that was exactly it. It's exactly that kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, but you know, later tonight it's supposed to rain. But what about right now? What about right now? And even when it rains, I used to love the rain. You know, when I was younger and I'm not talking like when I was six, I'm talking like when I was in my teens, man, I loved the rain. I thought the rain was fun. It cooled it off in a summer day. It was romantic if you had your girlfriend with you, right? Who doesn't want to dance in the rain like they mm -hmm. do in the movies? It's not as fun as they make it look in the movies because it's, yeah, no. it's cold and, you know, your clothes <laughs> are wet. Uh, but, you know, I mean, and, it, and that does happen. So, you know, that goes back to your, you know, the mindset part of the trilogy is get your mind right, you know, and, and start thinking more positive thoughts. And, God, that can sound so corny so often when people talk about that. Get your mind right. Start thinking more positive. And it is work. It's a lot of work. And, and, and you know what, Craig, that's really that right there is the big piece. It's kind of like, you know, my wife's a certified health coach and we've been in health and fitness forever. We, I actually started a, you know, a health and uh, a health coaching business many years ago. That was one of my lessons. Um, <laughs> but, Not one um, of the successful ones, apparently. Yeah, no, that one didn't work out so well. <laughs> um, but, it, you know, it, it's I want to lose weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. I want to lose weight. So what do you want? I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, great. How long do you think it'll take? Well, 20 pounds. We should be able to get that in a month, right? Right. But this is, this is the mindset of someone who's trying to make a positive improvement in their life. It didn't take you 30 days to put on the 20 pounds. You know, it didn't take you. Um, it probably took you a lifetime. Well, some people help. might disagree with you now with COVID. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. you know, the, the whole COVID 50 thing kind of happened. Yeah. Well, that, that is true. 
Um, but when you're trying to like improve your mindset and kind of like what I talked about at the very beginning, it's like all of, we are where we are. We are who we are because of what's gone into our mind over the course of our lifetime. Right. You know, we can change. This is one of my favorite, you know, um, motivational speakers forever. And I even have this picture right on my wall, Zig Ziglar. Mm-hmm. Um, but he would say, you are who you are. You are where you are because of what's going into your mind. You can change who you are. You can change where you are by changing what goes into your mind. It sounds pretty basic, but it takes a long time because we've been conditioned based on all of our experiences up until this point. What did our parents believe? What did our siblings believe? What was the environment that we grew up in? Did we grow up in a fancy neighborhood or did we grow up in a ghetto? Like you, you just, you, you know, you, you have such a great perspective for people and where they are because you don't know their journey. Right. But if you get to that point where you do want to change who you are and where you are, it takes time. You start pumping stuff in. Now, this thing here can be bad and it can be good. Like part of my morning routine is once I get out of the shower, I call, I, um, once I get on my ice cold water freezing bath, um, I call it, you know, shower power. And basically what I mean by that is I immediately start, I put on a book or a podcast or something motivational, something inspiring so that I'm taking myself to the next level because I've committed 60 minutes a day, 365 days a year, I will put good stuff in. Now, when you add it up over time, over decades, that's a lot of good stuff. It is. Yeah. And so. That's awesome. I need to start. I need to start doing that. Uh, That looks like that's our time today, Mike, please. And thank you so much, man. Cause um, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago, preparing for today, uh, I love that conversation. I love this conversation even more. So thank you so much for taking time out of your day. My my pleasure, Craig. Thank you for having me on. And like I said, if, if, if you're, um, if your listeners are interested in my book, it's oh, yes, free. Please, please uh, tell everybody yeah. how they can, uh, how they yeah, can get the book it's and see it. Dream big and crush your goals. And there's actually, there's editable worksheets at the end. So if you create your goals, you can put them into the form, um, edit it, save it. Uh, and it's the savage secrets.com slash playbook. Is that secrets and, plural with an S or singular? Yep. yep. The Savage, because I have more than one secret. So it's the Savage Secrets. <laughs> I've heard that about you, Mike. Dot com slash playbook. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Again, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us today. And, and uh, I look forward to future conversations as well. My pleasure, bro. Ring me up. I'll do it again. Thank you for joining us this week. Go to our website at thebizrevealed.com to catch all of our past episodes. We're available on all podcast apps, or you can watch any of our episodes on the Biz Revealed YouTube channel. I'm Craig Sawyer, and this is the Biz Reveal. Till next time.